A week or so ago, the people at Sketchfab.com launched a competition to create Zelda-themed environment art in virtual reality. The problem is I've been interstate up until today and I literally have one day to create my piece for the competition, so I'm just gonna jump head first because I am really into the theme. I love VR art, I am a, a, a huge Zelda fan, and I feel like I'm at the point now with Tilt Brush where I'm really comfortable and able to really just push myself and challenge myself to create something super epic. So let's get started. Now the theme of course was an environment from a Zelda game and there are a huge amount of Zelda games to pick from. So I opted to create a dramatic scene from my all time favorite Zelda game, Majora's Mask. It still stands today as a really effective aesthetic execution. And honestly, I think that the Majora's Skull Kid design and the face of the moon in Majora's Mask are some of the coolest and creepiest designs in video games. So I played around with a bunch of different poses for both Link and Skull Kid. And the feeling I wanted to capture was that of effort effortless power emanating from Skull Kid, and I really wanted to capture a sense of fear and fighting in Link's expression as he pushes forward against that power. A lot of Skull Kid's poses that I tried had a lot of animation about them, and I found that the simpler I went, the more calm stability I could capture, the more powerful he seemed, especially because in the game there were moments where he was animated and cheeky, but I think as a kid I was always most freaked out when he just stood there and looked at you. I thought this complemented by a force pushing against Link and uh, later in the painting with smoke and wind, it could make for a really cool composition and uh, a really nice contrast between the two characters and a sense of power emanating throughout the piece. With the concept finished, it was time to jump into VR, but not yet into creating the full piece. I wanted to just make sure I knew what the brushes looked like in Sketchfab from Tilt Brush before I got started on the full piece. I put together a bit of a sample piece, essentially showing each of the brushes in different colors and forms, laid out exactly how they are on the palette themselves in the same order, and then I exported that scene and uploaded it to Sketchfab so I can see what it looked like in context. As you can see, pretty much any brush with animation didn't show at all, and uh, some of the brushes with more effects like transparency or a lot of blurs either didn't show or showed quite a bit different. If you're interested in the direct comparison you can check out the link in the description which goes to the palette example on Sketchfab that I uploaded. Anyways back to virtual reality. Oh there goes gravity. Time to start painting my tilt brush piece. So as with my other tilt brush pieces I start off with my construction using pretty vivid colors and thin lines to very roughly sketch out the scene and the character poses. Now I had a pretty clear Clear idea as to how I wanted to go about it in the beginning and as you'll see later I had to make a few pretty drastic changes. Initially what I wanted to do was create a landscape in Tilt Brush itself. It didn't end up working in the end and I'll get to that later but at this early stage I just roughed out the uh, construction of the valley with some lines and a bit of a grid that flowed into the different geometry of the scene that I intended to create. I spent quite a bit of time getting the construction of the character poses exactly how I wanted it and then after a bit of a last check just to make sure that everything lined up, the characters were looking at each other. It was then time to get to the details and put the meat on the bones. And this is where things get really fun. I created a few image collages of reference files, including my original sketches for the poses I chose to create, but also imagery of the concept art and in-game art for the Majora's Mask characters. Now, when painting characters in Tilt Brush, of course, using the mirror mode makes things easier, but you can't use the mirror mode to great effect for an entire character and still have an organic looking pose. So I mainly use the mirror for a few specific things. Always the head, just to make sure they have a symmetrical aesthetic. Now, I'm gonna be 100% honest there were a few things I wasn't entirely happy about uh, in particular with Link. I feel like his proportions were a little more adult uh, rather than the childlike proportions he has in the game and also I feel like his face was just a little bit off but this is where you're sort of making compromises when it comes to virtual reality art. I know there is that old adage, the poor workman blames his tools, but at the end of the day, virtual reality art is really difficult because you can't manipulate, resize, or refine portions of or specific areas of your image. Once you paint something, it's either there or you take it away and start again. So rather than recreating Link entirely or repainting the face, which is the most painstaking and difficult thing to get right, I just got it to a place where I was happy enough with it and 
and moved on. Next it was time to paint the moon and this is where I used guides quite heavily. Guides were a new feature introduced in the most recent update for Tilt Brush which lets you create cubes or spheres or pill shapes that you can paint on and the brush will stick to the shapes. It's sort of like the equivalent of using a ruler in virtual reality space. Once I was happy with the moon it was then time to jump into painting the landscape and this is as I alluded to before where things didn't quite go according to plan. I followed my guides and started painting the landscape itself and creating the valleys and hills and then moved on from that to things like the trees and the mountains. But the reason this didn't go according to plan was on two fronts. The first was that it didn't look the way I wanted it to. The landscape was really big and there wasn't anything I could do about that but it meant that every brushstroke was really visible and there were lots of gaps and it just didn't look neat or smooth and I didn't know how to fix that. So the only solution I could come up with was of course to paint more and fill in more gaps and to add more detail to distract from the flaws in the piece. The problem is of course when it came time to export and upload my entry to Sketchfab it was way over the file size by about 80 megs. So with a bit of a sigh I erased all of the environment and all of the landscape and simply left the Skull Kid link and the moon and a few floating pieces of grass. So alas my final entry to the Sketchfab Zelda environment competition completely lacked an environment which was pretty disappointing to say the least at the time but I wasn't going to rest and upload this piece to you guys without having created a cool scene for you to enjoy. So I played around with the tilt brush default environment and found one that I thought would work well that had a ground, a horizon and a cool sky. Using this as a base I painted the clock town and clock tower in the distance and underneath the moon with a little more detail than I did in my original piece to make it a bit more of a feature than it was before and added a few elements to the piece to tie them in together like a path leading from the characters to clock town. I gave the path a bit of a fake perspective effect by shrinking it slightly as it went into the distance to make it look a little bit more dramatic and also give Clock Town and the Moon a greater sense of scale. And then I finished off the piece by incorporating some cool effects like beams of light emanating from Skull Kid and just minor tweaks and additions that really add a lot to the piece like glowing eyes in Majora's Mask.
So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That was my Zelda-themed virtual reality art piece. It was a huge amount of work and a load of fun to put together. Make sure to leave any suggestions or ideas for cool pieces that I could do in the future in the comments section below and maybe different art programs you want me to try in VR. If you want to check out the model on Sketchfab where you can view it on mobile VR or in your browser, make sure to check out the link in the description. And while you're there, make sure to check out my Sketchfab profile where I upload all the paintings and characters I create in virtual reality. This video wasn't sponsored by Sketchfab or anything, but I do submit there. They're a really cool community and this was just such a cool theme and uh, something I wanted to participate in and I thought I'd share the process with you. So thank you so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed it and until next time, I'll see you later. Make sure to subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos. And while you're at it, check out my shop where I sell eBooks, brushes, photo references, video courses, and more. There's another video you might enjoy from my channel over there. And you can also check out my behind the scenes daily vlog channel, Daily Jazza. That's it for now. And until next time, I'll see you later.